Okay, we need a blue key card for this, so we need to take a little detour. I believe there are some mines in here, so make sure to have your ranged weapons handy. And go into fine aim mode to blow up any mines in the area. Wow, that is a mine. Can I shoot it like this? No, not quite. But the bullet apparently was strong enough to bust the entire gate down. Which really makes you wonder just how the fuck this works. Wait a minute, I picked up another power glove. So I guess they do disappear after a while. Huh. I was wondering. You know that you have a power glove and your right fist is... Uh, Occasionally sparking up in electricity for no reason. Like I said, it basically does double the damage. It actually comes back from Fighting Force 1, but it doesn't come back as a power up from that game. Because <laughs> in uh, Fighting Force 1, you would never get a power glove yourself. The enemies would at the very last level, I believe. Basically, when you're getting up the, to Zeng's tower. Zeng, by the way, is the evil doer of evil that you're supposed to defeat in that game. Basic basically, Streets of Rage is Mr. X. Or in this case, Fighting Force is Mr. X. And to say the least, he's... Well, to say the least, the guys with those... Uh, Power gloves are very fucking annoying because the one attack they love to spam is exactly the punch with the power glove. Which of course will knock you down on the ground because it's like getting hit with a ginormous fist sized taser. In the face. Did somebody open a door? Oh look at that. Now, of course, uh, proximity mines do not activate near enemies. They have enemy immunity. Stop shooting me, okay? That's not very nice. And now we possess this lovely little item. But there's a door here as well that requires this key. Well, yes, of course, it's a shortcut way back to where we need to go to. You could go back to where you need to be but that's not entirely necessary because you can get your blue key for where you actually need to go here as well just make sure you actually pick it up before you leave which is right here because you can actually end up missing out on it here's the thing Whenever we are in a room that has an enemy that will drop a key card, it works a little odd. You may have noticed that the only times an enemy drops uh, a key card is if he's the last enemy alive in the room. The last time I did this, which admittedly wasn't that long ago, <laughs> I had a case where I actually killed the enemy who dropped the keycard behind one of these raised platforms and I didn't see it so for the longest time I was running around looking for that one little place where that keycard might be or whatever enemy might spawn in until eventually I noticed that it was sticking out from behind one of the platforms like a sore blue thumb so yeah, watch out for that shit. It loves to hide itself. This room is pretty nice if you're in the need to stock up. There's a lot of things you can pick up here. That's going back to where you were, I believe. Or maybe? No, wait. No, 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 no. Okay. You just made a full circle. Now you're gonna come out back on this room. Don't make the same mistake I did the last time. 
now you're going the right way then the loading screen shows up in the middle of a fucking corridor make sure to jump over those mines by the way cause they love to explode you could shoot them but why? <laughs> it's a waste of ammo don't shoot the damn mines you're just wasting your own ammunition for no reason whatsoever alright let's get back into the action Some of you may be wondering, how exactly am I moving around? Am I using the D-pad or the analog? And uh, does the analog controls work? Well, good news and bad news. Analog control does work, but I use the D-pad. The bad news is exactly why I use the D-pad rather than the analog. This is how I move around when I'm using the analog, okay? That, I mean the D-pad. It's not the most amazing thing ever. In fact, if you play this game for a few hours by using the D-pad, for a few hours straight, that is, your fingers will hurt. This is how I move around with the analog stick, however. Notice how my character moves to the side so quickly, and I'm only nudging the analog slightly to the side. I don't know if this is the problem of uh, the Xbox 360 controller analog, or is this a persistent issue across all different uh, controller types? Could really use a bit of clarification for that, because I really have I really have no idea. I like to say that this is just a problem with the 360 controller, but I honestly don't know. Anyway, here's a little mini boss, I suppose. Weird frogish kind of androids. <laughs> you could possibly call them battle toads if you want to. They kind of look similar. Oh, you're not going that way again. You won't get that shotgun back. But yeah, just shoot them. They're not that dangerous. If you got a strong enough weapon, you can just stun lock them like that. <laughs> Some of the boss fights in this game are very inconsistent in terms of difficulty. Like the first few bosses that you encounter here are really not that difficult, but some of the later ones can be really fucking bullshit. And then there's one where you don't even need to fight, but we'll get to that when we get to that, because that one is pretty fucking funny. Should have ordered in the nukes and saved myself some trouble. They got a fresh target. Well, okay. Looks like I get to ride in style. Style? You call that style? That looks like an old Audi. Like an 87 Audi or something. I don't fucking know. It looks like garbage. Style. Future. Everything in future is shit. <laughs> there is already a save game on the memory card. Uh, reminds you of the good old days when you had to keep overriding your save files because lo and behold your memory card is pretty fucking tiny. Better make this good. I see again the only time Hawk Manson ever fucking talks it's always better make this good or some other shit like that. Like why doesn't he have a personality? Uh, oh well. So where did we end up this time? We ended up in Armatrans, in Osaka, Japan. How the fuck did we get all the way to Japan from California with a helicopter? Nobody knows. Although it is pretty safe to assume that he probably didn't take a helicopter all the way to Osaka. That would have been a tremendous waste of helicopter fuel. Our current target is Robomax Cybernetic Weapon Prototype. The factory complex is heavily guarded, no shit. You will enter the facility by the ventilation shaft system. Locate the design office and erase plans and technical personnel. Now that's a not that's really not a nice way to treat people, okay? We're not exactly erasing them, we're just shooting them in the face, okay? And look at that! Inventory wiped again! Why? Who keeps stealing my guns? 
Son of a bitch. Ah! Oh. Stop that. A new type of enemy in this game. Guys with rifles. They really don't know how to use them though, because they can shoot much faster. But they shoot those, those rifles in that specific way because it's more annoying that way. Anyway, you don't have to destroy that panel over there. It doesn't do anything, it just gives you score. What you need to do is hit one of these, make it turn green, and then wait till this uh, ventilator slows the fuck down for you to safely pass through. This is only temporary, by the way, so make sure that you make it count. If you get caught in the blaze when it speeds up, it will hurt like a bitch. You might even die. You don't want that. That would be a very embarrassing way to die right at the beginning of the level. But if you don't make it through in time and it just speeds up, no problem. You can just hit the panel again. No penalty in case of that. Open up in there, will ya? Oh, it's a uh, no. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, no, no. No, no. Don't touch that. Don't touch that axe. Much like you do not touch that radio, you do not touch that axe. Here's where things get a little bit more tricky. You're gonna need that Uzi for yourself. To get rid of these fucking mines. When you do so, make sure to walk through quickly enough. Oh yeah, you gotta wait till the fans speed up again so you can actually slow them down properly. But there you go. You do all of that. And now you get to this particular fan, which is much different. You can actually touch it if you want to. You can even punch it. In fact, you kind of have to, to make the jump out through the hole in the wall and make it inside the Armatrans <laughs> facility. Wow, even the names are kind of forgettable. <laughs> See what I mean? By the time I'm done with this game, I'm not even gonna remember most of the crap that I went through. Besides, probably the bullshit parts, if there will be any. I mean, well, I'll definitely remember that, because that's always fucking annoying. Stop stun-locking me, you shit. Wasn't there a fatty in here? Could have sworn there was someone here. Well, anyway, one of these boxes contains a thing we need. Throw a nade! That made short work of them. But wait. Where is the object? Oh, this is odd. The object we're looking for hasn't shown up in its designated location. Because normally, something does pop out of those boxes. And it's this. The blue keycard. In this case, it popped out of that container. I guess it's the last container to blow up that pops out the keycard as well? No idea. It doesn't make much sense to me. But it makes perfect sense for us for now. Elf pickups are always gonna be pretty abundant around these first few levels. Later on it's gonna be a bit of a hassle to get some health but I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's never gonna be that bad of a problem. Hey look, it's a telephone! Dial 911 and you have typed in with your feet. Please dial again. Or better yet, don't. Nobody fucking cares. <laughs> Go through this door. A lot of the guards here will actually be dressed up sort of like ninjas, but not really. They'll just have nice swords and face masks. Skiing face mask, that is. The swords over there that they carry are actually katanas. They sometimes drop them. Here's another odd thing about them. They can actually block your melee attacks. 
It cannot block weapons. It can block your fists and feet. Now that I see it. I didn't think they can actually block uh, your kicks. But yeah, they can. Can I glitch out the camera here as well? No? Maybe a wrong spot? No? Can I do it like this? Guess not. I guess that's the... I guess the first Saudi pop machine is the one that glitches out the most. Oh well. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> yeah, sometimes these guys drop their katanas. In perfect shape. But like I also said, they also tend to block your melee attacks. They cannot block weapons, but they can block melee attacks and... That's where things tend to be kind of weird. Well, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, they can also block the melee weapons. The only things they can't block are ranged weapons, but that's kind of a no shit. What they can block are actually your melee weapons, like batons. I've had so many cases where they just outright ignored my batons by doing their stupid blocking maneuver. And because of... Kinda shoddy... Would you fucking stop that? Because of kinda shoddy programming in this game, in terms of this one thing, this one enemy, sometimes that can be a problem when they start blocking your melee weapons, because they can actually break without doing any damage to them. And that is really stupid. It shouldn't do that, but it does. Oh look, a katana inside a fucking computer monitor. Who the fuck keeps a katana in a monitor? Makes no goddamn sense. Oh yeah, moving moving through rooms will uh, raise all soli pops. So, drink them while you got them? Kinda sucks that you can't keep them around. I mean, it's free health. It's soli pop. It's... It tastes like pixels. <laughs> yeah, look at that damage though. Say what to me? I have two katana now. I am double the ninjago. Come over here, bitch. Oh yeah, he tried to fucking block it from behind. You dumb son of a bitch. Look at that! He actually blocked it! Let me show you a replay of that, so you can see for yourself, in slow motion. Son of a bitch, he just... Blocked the fucking sword with his arms. And it broke the sword. That is dumb. If there is one bug that is fucking dumb, that is the one. But like I said, the game is for the most part pretty solid. There aren't that many bugs that are really bad and well, this isn't that big of a deal because the best thing you can do is just play by the game's rules. Pick up a different gun. Like a, pick up your fucking pistol and just shoot them. Oh, you think you can block my katana of superior ninjago skill? Well, fuck you. Try blocking a bullet. See how well that works out for you. And they can't do that. You cannot block bullet. One thing that is worthy of noting is that you can inflict headshots with all of the ranged weapons. So if you ever have the opportunity to do some headshots, take the opportunity, do some headshots. Why does it make that sound? Undestroyed Sodi Pop means we haven't been here yet. I suggest not destroying the Sodi Pops unless you absolutely need to. 
Even then, you could just kick him a little bit to get some silly pop rather than blowing up all of it. Fuck's sake. Want some fucking... Oh, it wasn't even him who shot me. You want some feet? Smell my socks. Bitch. Honestly, I can't wait till we actually beat this game. Because the other PlayStation 1 game that I have in mind uh, to play for the channel is actually Spyro 2 and Spyro 3. Which, as we all know, are much better games than this. And superior to uh, the, the two superior games of pretty much the entire series of Spyro games. For fuck's sake, stop doing that. I'm gonna stab you. I hate how you do that. 